sense of presence. A presence I haven't felt since. Master. Do it. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and Druids, and all you crazy Sith Lords out there. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day, wherever part of the galaxy you might be in. We are just wrapping up our first week of 3v3 Grand Arena, and although normally it's not the most exciting aspect of the game, this Darth City is data crunch shenanigans. We need to talk about it, and I hope it's been getting you more wins and giving you a little bit more excitement to pump in the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. We have a lot of gameplay we're going to talk about and break down data. One of the biggest questions I've been getting is what is the best way of using this Darth Sidious data cron that we have? Because uh, just like Maul said, well, <laughs> It's been quite a while since we felt this type of power from Darth Sidious. I wanted to spell this straight from the get-go. I think that out of a lot of data crons, especially this one that's gonna be very mainstream, I'm seeing one big misinterpretation. Some people are saying, I don't see any difference with Darth Sidious. And when I chat with them in the comments, it is very apparent right away that people are forgetting, you need to be solo. Darth Sidious cannot have any other Sith with him. So if you're having a hard time utilizing the data cron, I'm more than likely willing to bet it's probably because you're not letting Sidious go in a solo format. This won't work on defense unless somehow the opponent accidentally leaves him by himself on defense and they couldn't kill him off for some reason. So really, it's mainly to be an offensive tool in a solo format. So I hope that helps some of those people that were like saying, I don't see any difference. It's a massive difference as we're going to see. And we already talked about Darth Sidious about a week or two going to Datacron first drop, but I want to put this on your radar again, just in case it's been a minute. I'm going to show this uh, little modding graphic from Peenpo that we showed not too long ago as a little reminder. But hey, the good news is when I went into my Grand Arena this past week, I forgot to remod Darth Sidious and I was still kicking some butt. So not a big deal if your mods aren't in place, but let's try to maximize the opportunities that you have. And hey, if you need some help with remodding your roster as well, talk to Peenpo. He'd be more than happy to help you out with your modding game. So let's go ahead, start rolling some gameplay. And then towards the end here, We'll go ahead and show you even more data that we have at our disposal. So these first two battles that we're going to show is me going up against a variety of things with my Dart Cities. However, the biggest downside of Grand Arena is I only get three Grand Arenas a week, and that means I only can use this Dart Cities three different times. My first time I went up against a Jedi Knight Luke lead, and I think Jedi Knight Luke lead with Jedi Master Luke caused some complications, maybe because of my bad mods, but Jedi Knight Luke lead really wrecks the massive speed boost. That Sidious gains from the Zetacron because we get a hundred extra speed. So I had a hard time getting that working, but there are a lot of other Jedi Master Luke compositions he can beat. But I had amazing success up against Star Killer and up against Dr. Aphra. And the numbers are showing that as well. A very good utilization of Dart Sidious. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are some two solid teams right there that he can take down. But we have many, many others after this Star Killer battle here. And I want to give a special thanks to the community. This is some of my favorite stuff. When there's something really cool and hot whether it's a new character a rework an omicron or in this situation the rare situation a very popular data crime because a lot of people have a relic seven city is laying around on their roster we have a lot of gameplay from the community so be sure to check them out if you want to chat with them ask more about their experience you'll see a lot of credits for the rest of this video and there's a lot of interesting stuff stuff that i, I wouldn't think would really work but it did for example we're seeing some good degree of success darth city is up against Riva, yeah uh it's kind of nutty remember the whole core of this the most of these battles you're not seeing dart Sidious brute force his way through these teams through uh, just through his damage you want to get those five stacks of damage over times because with that level nine bonus on the dart Sidious data cron when an enemy starts their turn at five stacks of damage over time it's the feet. So we're seeing things like Reva easily getting through that. Things like Malgus, even crazy things like some Jedi Master Luke stuff. My some of my opponents fought my Master Luke on defense with their own Darth Sidious, and even even nutty stuff. Things I was like, ah, that's not gonna work. Up against things like Sarah Junda, Terran Malikos. So we got a lot of cool stuff for the remainder part of this video here. Now, in terms of the, the Galactic Legend Hemisphere, if you really wanted to up the ante, dial up the heat. On your Dart Sidious, if you, it seems like the best GLs to use your Sidious up against would be Jedi Master Luke. There's a variety of Jedi Master Luke stuff, such as, for example, the Bass Lashon lead, or even just a normal Jedi Master Luke lead. Dart Sidious is doing some pretty solid work. And 
we're also seeing some pretty solid success up against things like, for example, Sith Eternal. Somehow, <laughs> Darth Sidious seems to be a little bit better than maybe his Galactic Legend counterpart in the game, albeit only temporary. Don't get me started. I wish this was something a little bit more permanent. One of the downside data crowns, but hey, you know, it's here. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a great giveaway for the community for these next couple months that we have here. In terms of other Galactic Legends, I'm not seeing much, but we do have some bonus gameplay at the end. We already showed Sith Eternal versus, uh, not Sith Eternal, Darth Sidious versus a variety of things in our last video talking about Darth Sidious. But we have some bonus gameplay at the end. I know we're not in 5v5 Grand Arena. I think he might have a little bit more wiggle room in a 5v5 sense. For example, taking out some premier Kyle Ren. But in terms of the non-galactic legend hemisphere, a crazy night and day improvement going from a character you would never use to even taking down things like Darth Malgus. Once you get those five stacks of damage over time, game, set, match. We got some other interesting stuff that's on the agenda some stuff that i was a bit worried of going up against for example dark trooper moth gideon we have some gameplay from swh gameplay that's the channel name right there i wanted to do this so badly but again you know especially the first week of the new character you know datacrons and just the 3v3 format you kind of get a little hesitant that's why we're making this video to kind of dispel some of those hesitancies that even i myself had i figured with dark Trooper moth gideon super durable plus we have some cleanses on the scout trooper as well and on top of it, the dark trooper itself the spot of one kind of hits like a nutmeg but thanks to the fact that we have a crazy amount of uh, max health max protection and defense and there's no assisting allowed with this dark status data crown i was actually fairly impressed the fact of the matter is that we got through this eventually even when gideon was able to pop a revive still really no issue whatsoever so we're able to get out there get another round of damage over times in this gameplay that we see here and still was able to get him knocked down and again it's very helpful that you're able to get the constant cooldown reset so every single turn he's getting his turn in there through setting his cooldowns it always has that aoe and bada bing bada boom sidious is in the room honey now we got some other stuff if you don't believe this gameplay because there was no moff gideon with that dark Moff getting we have some gameplay from i fly dad showcasing a more standard lineup that we have inside the grand arena meta with moff gideon both gideons i should say it's a little bit different of a cookie to cut up here but again same thing eventually sith eternal <laughs> I almost feel like this should be a Sith of Turtle. It's not, though. With Darn Sidious, he's able to eat up all those hits. If you can't especially assist on him, and that's why he's really good up against things like Jedi Mass Luke, because Jedi Mass Luke relies on assist. It don't work in this capacity. Eventually, he just gets a bunch of turns, gets the five stacks damage over time, insta kill, no brainer, easy plays, my friend. So, Moff Gideon, this might be something I might utilize. Although, I was able to beat Starkiller after, which is really cool. For me, I see Dark Tremoth getting kind of being a pain point with the Dita crown right now. Pretty gnarly team. I have counters normally, but this seems to be a little bit nicer, in my opinion. However, that's not all we have, ladies and gentlemen, Gungans and droids. We got some other stuff on our agenda that, again, surprised me moving forward here. This gameplay right here from Truffa. Hopefully, I'm uh, saying their name correctly. I was not expecting something like this because of the fact that there's a lot of tenacity, all this other jazz in a Sierra Junda lineup. But as we progress through this gameplay, we were able to see this individual just chop through all this and get rid of, get rid of all the buffs around the Sierra Junda team, start applying those damage over time. And the good thing about this too, what is one of the functions of Malikos? He needs to constantly be assisting. He can't assist because of that Darth Sidious data crown. So eventually, the five stacks gets on, and that's it. That's all there was to it. So this is another big feat that we have here. So we're going to talk more about other 3v3 things in case this doesn't satisfy your interest. But I want to leave some bonus gameplay. We've already shown some preliminary Darth Sidious gameplay before Grand Arena kicked off. But I just want to put out there, I think he's going to have even more potential likely in a five v5 scenario like we see here we have uh, a dark city that clay olsen was able to go up against and you know <laughs> again pretty crazy stuff if they can't get assist and sidious has some crazy amount of durability on him it really goes to show how far this data crown can really take you to the distance so we're gonna let that uh, supremeter cow run go into the ultimate here and we'll be uh, off to the races at that point pretty close battle you know it's, it's, it's a little sketch but clay olsen said in the comments of this video he made it three out of three on a supreme Eater kyle ren so that seems pretty cool so i'm looking forward to 5v5 we're still a couple of weeks away but in the meantime 
let's go highlight a few more things on what we're able to do right now with Dark Sidious in 3v3. We have thousands and thousands of battles that we can break down. Gary, let's go ahead, pull it up, Pawnee, and let's show you what we got cooking here. So, over on SWH.GG, the data just came in. Across the board, with everything mixed together, we're seeing Dark Sidious have about a 76% win rate in 16 thousand battles if we're talking about solely him against galactic legends as i already kind of summarized there's not too much there but primarily if you are going to do this it seems like the biggest opportunities are going to be going up against jedi master luke for example that seems to be a pretty good thing now we have a lot of people trying to go up against job of the hut and we're able to get a couple like multi shots you know you, you get rid of uh, bausch Lea, get rid of kersantan that might be a useful strategy but jedi master luke which is something i was putting on defense this past week Sidious has a 90 percent win rate up against pretty gnarly stuff again uh, some similar thing of leia some people are using darts just to kind of crack through some of the first few units on a leia team uh, but if you're trying to one shot maybe not the best way to go same thing of rate we're not seeing a lot of opportunities there it's permanent cow some struggles in a 3v3 would seem but as we can see for example sith eternal we do have some opportunities where dart city is makes work happen because why sith eternal can't link a solo character so pretty much the guy can't get any insta kills popping off then and get his ultimate charge going so really jedi master luke sith eternal are going to be your two main areas of opportunity here or maybe you break apart some of these key members of the teams for the other galactic legends out there but how about this let's talk about those non-gl things a little bit more now we already showed some gameplay versus a variety of things but there's some other stuff so against star killer i had a great success no issue whatsoever against star killer can't assist so they can't really get the whole engine going 98% win rate, very nice. Resistance have been kind of nutty this season with their new Datacron set. We're seeing about a 95% success win rate. Again, that was a battle I was a bit hesitant to do myself. Seems like there's some success there, uh, getting those insta kills out. Malgus seems to be pretty safe. Now, Gideon, we did see a lot of Gideon stuff. Maybe got to be a bit more hesitant about a 60% win rate there. Other Malgus battles, especially without Darth Road and Basilisk shot, uh, oh, near 100%. Surprisingly enough, some people getting wins up against Tuskins, 77% win rate. Now, I was thinking, oh, well, there's no damage over times on Tuskins. It won't work. I'm guessing maybe just the constant AoE bombardment eventually chips away at the Tuskins. Again, we saw some gameplay earlier with Malico's 82%, nothing to scoff at. That's going to maybe save you a Malgus. That maybe will save you a Gideon. That maybe will save you a Treya or Galactic Legends versus Malico's. Kind of a big deal. Uh, some other Gideon battles. Again, if you don't see the OG Gideon and Scout Trooper, it's a little bit easier of a team. 80% win rate. Surprisingly enough, CLS could be a bit of a struggle. 68% win rate. But there are some teams you probably want to stay away from. Things that have lots and lots of cleanses because, well, you can't get the insta kill that. So, for example, Captain Rex, very low win rate, but it makes sense. There's a lot of cleanses on the team here. Now, we did show some Reva stuff earlier on, and I think maybe the reason why we saw some success was because there was no uh the in grand inquisitor who has pretty substantial cleanse now not to say people haven't had success there were definitely some people that have a success but you i think more often than not it's going to be a bit more of a struggle with that grand inquisitor kind of being in there and then of course seven uh, seven sister getting a lot of foresight could kind of get in the way so it's nice to see that there's some opportunities eh, but yeah maybe it's one of those where if you don't need to I, i'd stay away from him now some people went up against the galactic legend Chirut kind of scary again there's a lot of cleanses on a true team and right now with the datacron yeah you, you don't want to really feed true any more debuffs again a lot of other malgus stuff out there again a uh, kind of odd it looks like against a standard darth revan team kind of a lower percent win rate so this is why we're talking about this because some things you think it would work it does work and some things you think it wouldn't work it does work here a lot of qui-gon Jin battles that we have going on here however if you are going to go up against sierra jun to watch out baby cal with malikos could cause problems, but no one's really putting this lineup down because Padme Amidala gets through it really easy with her cheese. So you can really see there's a lot of great opportunities. General Anakin Skywalker, normal Grand Inquisitor team, uh, pretty much almost anything else near 100%, uh, exact 100% win rate on Dr. Afra. Lots and lots and lots of ways to be using this guy. But again, you want to watch out for those Captain Rexes. Again, things that have a lot of cleanses, you might want to try to avoid, not get too involved. We got even Maul. Well, that's, that's a pretty nutty as well. So people 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 hopefully i again i know data crowns you know the hit or miss unfortunately my free to play account i was not able to get the dart city's data credit even though i re-rolled a few times kind of a bad feeling i'm hoping though a grand majority of you guys were able to get your dart Sidious in line because really this guy is making a big splash 
in this grand arena meta we had this for a couple months hopefully can get it if not this conquest the next conquest in a few weeks here it's kind of a big deal i wouldn't quite say it's darth bane level power but for a character that's legacy came here day one and has been trashed for about 90 percent of the game maybe trash a bit too hard not great for 90 percent of the game this is great especially since we're shoved it's shoved down our throats for all those relic requirements for the sith eternal unlock people i'm gonna leave it for you guys right there thank you for stopping by hopefully you're a little bit excited about this guy and he's gonna get you a couple more wins moving forward and hopefully we're able to kind of clarify some misconceptions about what dark sidious's data crown is supposed to do and how it works but i just want to make sure you guys know as well that when you're around here i want to make sure you're having a good time because one of our mottos is i think we've maybe said this once or twice we want to make sure that you're saying at the end of the day how it's great to be in the empire today Silence.